Right here, right, so following on from um, the previous video on that I put out there on wing fences and uh, the problems with uh, uh, the sabre dance and stuff like that, uh, this is, I'm going to try and keep this video as quick as I possibly can, uh, and we're just going to have a look at a couple of things, we're going to look at swept back wings, um, area rule and uh, anhedral and stuff like that, so, and a couple of, what we're going to focus on is the aircraft that we're going to look at, um, with these sort of features to give you examples of what they look like. So there's your any any wing, a swept back wing. Technically, technically speaking, this is a swept back wing. You got a sweep with the leading edge and a sweep with the trailing edge. The F one hundred four. Some people might say that has straight wings, but but the leading edge is swept back, so it does have the same kind of issues that is, that is, uh, that your sort of standard swept back wing like the F eighty six would have. Okay. Uh, comparing two aircraft then, this is the later model F-86, there's some wing fences appear on there, yeah, remember the F-86 was in production while they found the problem with the F-100 that I mentioned about the, the previous video, and they had to stick these wing fences on there, yeah, the F-86A, then changing the F-86BCD, F-86F, it got an all-flying tail, so this whole tail moves on the F-86F, okay, and it got... Uh, slight wing fences there, and I think it lost its leading edge slats. Okay, in fact, tell you what, we'll fly it and have a look. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off the point there. So, swept back wings first turned up on the ME163. So, if we look, that's not an ME163. Um, yeah, so the 163 and the ME262. The Germans playing the swept back wings. Um, now it was originally, uh, it was to balance the lift from that point there, the leading edge, all the way back to the, the the trailing edge tip there. It balanced the lift forces across that over a longer longitudinal area, right? So that it was to give it stability so it didn't need a tail plane. It wasn't originally, I don't think it was designed to reduce drag. That was a kind of you know, a plus point of having swept back wings. Um, I mean, they knew it was going to, with, uh, to re reduce drag as well, so that was the the idea behind it. Right, so without hanging around too long on one aircraft. So wing fences, we saw wing fences on the F-100. The Russians absolutely love them, so we'll have a look at the MiG-15. There we are, that's what a MiG-15 looks like. Fences like that. People at, me, at the, the academy I teach at, we went up to see the... Uh, the MiG-15 that they have up in the National, Mu National Museum of Flight in Scotland. Okay, and you can see they've got big wing fences on that. It's not the wing fence king though. Okay, MiG stuck with it through the 17 and through the MiG-19 and the MiG-25 has them as well. Okay, there you go, there's MiG-17 MiG with six wing fences on it. Okay, the MiG-19 goes even more swept back. So MiG-19 we're getting a Take the MIG angles, right, and once we get a uh, look at the sweep back on that, okay, and more sweep back needs a big massive wing fence like that, okay. Other companies or other design bureaus, the Sukhoi Su 7, there we go, big wing fences, lots of sweep back, look at the sweep on that, yeah, all the way back, and even little fences right on the wingtips here, almost like a, like a very, very pro, proto kind of winglet there. That would do the same job as a winglet and reduce induced drag. Um, and as you see, history kind of repeats itself. Modern airliners are now going for winglets, one up and one down as well, and so many modern 737s that you see. Okay, if the fence goes around the front of the the wing, like that, it's kind of vortalon. Okay. Um, right, what else do we see? So there you go, there's some Anything else with wing fences? There we are. Right, uh, wing fences on the top. On the Yak 28, this is a bomber. Right, quite a fast bomber. You know, it's a supersonic, and it's also we've got some uh, notches in the wing leading edge there. So not sorry, not notches. That's a dog tooth or a sawtooth. Okay, what's well, got notches? Uh, mirages and um, lightnings. Lightnings, lightnings, lightnings. Have a look at lightning. Oh, we'll, we'll take a lightning for a flight. Okay, so 
wing fences is what's on the syllabus. Yeah. We've got notches in the wing. And you'll see them. I'll just zoom in on them. See that notch there just in front of the round drill? You can see that little notch cut in there. Yeah. And what that's doing is, it's doing a couple of things. If you notice it, it's in front of the yellow ones. When we take off and start flying, you see the yellow ones moving. And there we go, we've got yellow ones on the wings waggling up and down. Okay, yeah. Um, and the notches are in front of the yellow ones. They do two things. They're stopping the span wise flow at the wing tips. The other thing that helps us a little bit on the lightning is the slight change in uh, sweep angle. Okay, now we saw it on the Lightning, you'll also see it later on on things like the Vulcan and Concord, which aren't on War Thunder, so I can't show you one. We'll go over the water there, just zoom in a bit. See that change in angle around about that notch where it just changes changes angle sweep slightly. Okay, and the yellow ones, yeah, they are behind that notch. So it's supersonic flight. Um, you're going to get a vortex created by that notch which means that the yellow ones will be in a vortex flow rather than uh, separated air flow. So it, it, and basically when we've just gone supersonic there. When you get the separated flow behind the shot wave or the separated flow will be the trail and edge and it'll creep forward. Okay. The positioning of the yellow ones means that the separated flow because of the sweep on the wing will not cover all of the yellow one at the same time. Okay. And there you go, lightning so fast it runs out of the map quite quickly. Um, right, what else we talk about? So we are subsonic at the minute. Right, and we've gone through the sound barrier there. We've got a little bit of a problem going go through the sound barrier because like I said I'm just gonna show you different aeroplanes. So that's a light and that has the, the notch in the leading edge. It's a transonic stability yeah, it's a transonic um, stability feature to prevent a tip stalling with the F1. Okay, what else we talk about? Area rule and um, anhedral. Has the lightning? The lightning has a touch of anhedral. Okay, if you look, it's got quite a high mounted wing compared all the way on the fuselage, so that's going to make it. If, it, if the wing's high up, it's going to make it a little bit maybe too stable and not manoeuvrable enough. Stability and manoeuvrability are always a trade off. So we'll give it swept back wings. That's going to make it laterally stable when it inside slip. So to counteract that, we're going to make the wings point down ever so slightly. See there, got some anhedral on the wings, just slightly not notched down to give it a better roll performance. Okay, roll performance is it's to do with your wingspan. It's to do with how big your ailerons are. Okay, this aircraft does not have tail ones; it has a stabilator, right? So the or an all flying tail. So the tail moves up and down to control pitch, the whole tail moves up and down. So the separate flow in the shock wave cannot cover the, the whole tail at any one period. Right, let's have a look at something else. As I said, this is going to be a whistle stop tour. Okay, what else we got? So we got uh sticking for British now. So something that does have tail ones. And it's also got, so the Jaguar, those pylons on the top of the wing act as kind of wing fences. Okay, and as well as that, just, it kind of obscures them, but there's actually a dog tooth leading edge in the Jaguar's, uh, uh, Jaguar's wing, which gives it, um, it creates a vortex over your, your flaps and your control surfaces to make sure that they still work. Now the Jaguar, as you can see, it's got its flaps down there, it raises its flaps. When it rolls, the Jaguar uses, let's get the wheels up a bit, the Jaguar uses differential spoilers, okay? The differential spoilers, we mentioned you can get Dutch roll off a spoiler, so if you use standard ailerons, right, the ailerons can, can suffer from separated flow at high subsonic and transonic speeds. So by using the spoilers, you, you kind of negate that a little bit they don't so far from that being on they're not on the trailing edge so they're not in separate flow they're actually creating separate flow and destroying lift now the other thing that makes a jaguar roll if you look at the tail you see instead of the standard stabilator one's going to go up one's going to go down yeah and it's going to roll like that so that's called the tail one you want to see the tornado in two seconds you see it's slightly different 
Now stability wise, Jaguar's got a low mounted low mounted engines and a high mounted wing. Okay? With the wing being that high up, if you look at the Jaguar engines in the same place as a Phantom, right? So similar to the Phantom. Yep. Yeah, um but and you've still got the, the slight anhedral on the tail, you've got slight anhedral on the wings, right? Why do you need that anhedral? Two things. Anhedral combat Dutch roll. Well, I can't really simulate Dutch roll on War Thunder. It's kind of like a... Uh, uh, I'm trying here. I'm doing it very badly. Let's not try. Okay, so um, Dutch roll is a kind of... Um, uh, a phenomenon that you don't really want. And you get rid of that by having... that it, Aircraft with dihedral make it worse. Because as the, as the aircraft rolls like that, the upgoing wing, the angle of attack on the upgoing wing, um, basically creates more drag and drags the wing back over. So you get you rolling to the left, but you'll be yawing to the right at the same time. And when you're going supersonic, if you put the nose out of line, right, with the airflow, then the air is going to push against the flat side of the nose of the aircraft. Remember, the aircraft's been pushed from the back by the thrust from the engines. You don't want the back end of the aeroplane overtaking the front end of the aeroplane. Yeah, right. So, um, why do we need a bit of iron drill as well? Because it makes the aircraft slightly less stable in the lateral uh, sense, which gives it an increased roll performance. You can see the Jaguar rolls really well. Okay, right. What else have we got? So that's anhedral. I missed something about the Jaguar as well. If you look at um, area rule from the bottom, right, where the wing is its thickest point, yes, where the wing is its thickest point, that's where the shot wave is going to happen. So you remember, we sweep the wings back. So when the w when the airflow goes over the wing, it takes a longer route than on a straight wing. Let's pick something with a straight wing. In fact, if we if we have the tornado with the wings forward, so with less sweep. Yes, the air flow goes over this wing and it will go over quite a large bump, okay? Or the, the, the camber of the aerofoil, okay? When you take the, so if I take this path over a straighter wing, yeah, it takes a shorter path, but the bump will, will the, the way the airflow sees it, the bump will be bigger, okay? Now, if we then take this path over the wing, if we go from here and we go along the wing when the wing swept back, so let's pick something with the swept back wings like the Harrier. Okay, so as the wings swept back and we're going over a, a, um, a, a, the air, airflow takes a longer path and because it takes a longer path over the same wing it's basically um, the, the if you had a, a I don't know, an 80 centimetre wing thickness um, and you had a swept wing and a straight wing, the swept wing it would it would it would go, you know, like basically along the wing and uh, it wouldn't go over so much of a bump. So what that gives it is it means that when the airflow hits it and a shock wave forms, you'll get a smaller and weaker shock wave on a swept back wing. I need to really draw diagrams on a on a board for that, so I might intersperse them with this video later on. If I get time to edit it. Right, anyway, I want to show you different airplanes. So the Sea Harrier, we'll take this up. Uh, I'm just going to take the weapons off to show you the wings a bit better. And then we'll take this for a quick, quick flight. Okay, we're in 15 minutes now, so I'm going to count it in two seconds. So, uh, as you can see, the Sea Harrier. It's got a stabilator. Doesn't have it. Doesn't have a tail on. Right. It doesn't need one because it has quite large ailerons. Right. Well, well, not massive ailerons, but it's got all this anhedral wing. Why has it got an anhedral wing? Because the engine and the weight of the aircraft is mounted lower down. The wing is mounted higher up because it needs various reasons. It, the nozzles for the vertical takeoff on the Sea Harrier have to be underneath the bottom. Right, just show you from the other side. Just see those nozzles poking out there. Um, they've got to, they've got to be under the wing, so you need a high wing, and you have plenty of anhedral. It means when you want to roll, 
if you look at the road performance on that, it's quite striking. Okay, right. So, Anhedral does two things for you. It counteracts Dutch roll, especially important on super air on supersonic aircraft or transonic aircraft where Dutch roll would cause the air to catch the front of the fuse large and bit and basically cause an instability in flight and departure from control flight, especially higher speeds. Alright, so Anhedral does that for you and also makes the aircraft roll a bit faster for um, military aircraft. Okay. Right, so some more examples. Uh, right, we need some examples of area rule then. Really good example of area rule is... Uh, if we go to that one, if you look at the F5 Tiger, right, and we look at this curve here, so as you can see, where the engines are, yeah, I'll just get rid of all this stuff here, I'll just get, that, get a better view. Okay, so where the engines are, you can see where the en engines are, then uh, where the thickest it, it gets thicker, and where the uh, thickest part of the wing is, or the maximum uh, camber part of the wing, that's where you thin the fuselage in. And what this does is, we'll just take the, we'll take the F, we'll take the F5 supersonic. Shouldn't take long. Now the F5 again doesn't have incredibly powerful engines, and like the Harrier, it's only got a stabilizer. Doesn't have a tailor on. See if it needs one. Has it got an heat drill? Not really. Yeah. Very small wingspan. But why does it need the anhedral? Look where the fuselage is. The fuselage and the weight is mounted above the wing. So when it wants to roll, basically the weight of the fuselage wants to go that way. So it, it rolls pretty well. Not quite as fast as a Harrier, but that's no slouch when it comes to rolling because it's got a low mounted wing. Yeah. So We've just got basic stabilators, quite, you've got differential spoilers, oh, no, no, sorry, I'm lying, we've just got quite, quite big, compared to the size of the wing, we've got quite big ailerons, okay, there's plenty of room. plenty of pitch control there, front would turn, right, let's try and go supersonic, and then the idea behind see the area rule quite clearly there where it's thin in the middle the idea behind that is when it goes supersonic and we get the shock wave then the shock wave sorry for the camera jittering about me uh, so we're going to hit the ground first there we go the shock wave will appear and quickly move backwards over the airframe okay so it doesn't get hung up in the middle of the airframe on a bump where the there's a shot wave again we've gone subsonic again you get a shot wave when you go through the sound barrier going faster you'll also get a shot wave as you decelerate through the sound barrier okay like i say critical mac on war thunder was modeled for all aircraft at mac one but in reality you could get a shot wave in that shot corner at a lower airspeed and different altitudes should affect it as well altitudes are correctly modeled on war thunder though yeah so if we go, we're doing Mach 1.1 there, yeah, and we are doing 730, there you go, let's just get level flight and stabilise a bit. So there we're down 6, Mach 1 is 6, Mach 1 there is 660, six, six, about 660 knots. If we go to high altitude we'd find that we would be going Mach 1 at a, at a lower airspeed. In fact there you go, that's held in the supersonic climb. And as you see, the higher you go, it still should map me, I should map one, but the airspeed is 639 there. So at 12,000 feet, map one 630 knots. Right, if we go up to about 20,000 feet, you'll find that map one will be, I'm guessing, about 600. And that's because air basically air molecules bumping into air molecules when the density drops there you go Mach 1 there 620 so there's about a 30 knot difference for 20,000 feet of, of height right okay so what else can we look at just before we sign off there 
we've looked at area rule, we've looked at anhedra, let's give you some better examples. Really good example of area rule would be the British Buccaneer. Okay, so uh, there we are, and we'll just see one of these in flight. Okay, swept up wings again. Yeah, it's got a high tail to keep it out the way of the any separated flow uh, off the back end of the wing. And if you look at the fuselage, you'll see. If you're looking down, you can't see from that thing, but if you look from certain angles, you'll see it's got a big fat bum. Okay, yeah, you see that big bulge behind behind where the wing joins on. Yeah, you got lots of fuel in there and all that sorts of stuff. Right, so that bulge there is where you can have a bulge in the fuse dodge because it's not level with the uh, maximum camber of the wing so your shock wave now we can get a buccaneer as a subsonic aircraft well a transonic aircraft it doesn't have afterburners it's not designed to fly at supersonic speeds okay what's well, designed to do it will go supersonic if we go to about I'll tell you what we'll try and get a buccaneer supersonic Um, it's got four, about 400 knots there, 11,000 feet. We might, might, we might need more altitude to do this, but we'll just stick it in a 45 degree dive and we'll see if we can. We can uh, we're probably going to run out there. Yeah, it's kind of. 8.98. Very, very nearly supersonic. You can see the wings waggling a bit there. Okay. Now, the noticeable thing is, in fact, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go off the battlefield and just let it spawn back in again. So where the button here lives is, try not. Yeah, 83 feet, 50 feet. Above sea level, just level it out there. There you go, this is where the book in the air lives. Okay, it uses ground effect to, to skim over the waves and it's designed to fly over the sea as low as it can to avoid so the ships won't pick it up until the last minute. Yeah, and that's what that's a book in the air's kind of natural habitat. You can see flying so low there, it's actually whipping up the waves behind it, yeah, below 50 feet, and that's using ground effect as well. And it's maintaining a speed without afterburners of Mach 0.96. Okay, 633 knots. And it will do that all day long. Yeah, so because the fuselage, it's got area rule, it's got swept back wings, it's got all the design features it needs. Okay, and it basically, um, and if you look at the change in sweep of the wings, yeah, it's got that thing the Lightning has where it changes the wing sweep at the midpoint and that helps it as well helps to control the shot weight sorry to control the uh vortices over the wings it's got loads of other features in the bucking out blowing flaps and all that but they're not in the syllabus okay um right last thing i'm going to show you then so Well, second last thing I want to show you is a tornado. I'm up to 25 minutes, I said I wasn't going to, wasn't going to go this long. Right, so the tornado, we've got variable geometry. We just compared two aircraft, it's good to do comparisons, okay. So, all flaps on the on the back of the wings, we track up there. So they're essentially, they are just flaps, they're not ailerons or flap ones or anything. And compared to the Jaguar, it has a lot larger tail surface, okay? And the tail surface deflects a little bit more than the Jaguar. Okay? So you'll see that gives it a very, very snappy roll rate, despite not having... Now it has got slight anhedral on the wings. You see it's got anhedral on the wings there, okay? Coupled be why? Because the wings are mounted high on the fuselage. The Tornado, this is the interceptor version. It was originally designed as a low altitude attack aircraft. Yeah. 
So when the wings come all the way back, you'll see got a high sweep angle on the wings there. Yeah. Now, why doesn't he need wing fences? Because wing fences are there to prevent things like the Sierra Dance from tip stalling in the stall condition. It's doing 700 knots at Mach 1.2 at the minute. Very fast airplane in the tornado. So if we slow it down, yeah, and we get the point where we're going to we're going to stall. So we'll let if we take it right down, we we'll get the one thing the tornado doesn't do is slow down very well. Yeah. When the air breaks out, still doing 400 knots. Need a bit more speed off. As you can see, when you come down to, to stall the aircraft, you can sweep the wings forward, so you don't have that stip, that that span wise flow and tip stall problem. All right. So should stall it. Oh. There we go, approach and stall. And we've got a nice controlled dropping of the nose. Yeah, we're not getting the tip stall problem where the tail sinks like we do on, on the F100. Right, and there's the, see how much, at low speed, how much the tail wants to deflect. Okay, and it's also got differential spoilers on the wings. Um, you notice on the tornado where it lands, once the wheels wait on wheel switches down the differential spoilers or the spoilers will pop up as um extra air brakes sort of thing. Right. Okay, Compar comparing that with round about the same time it was getting developed, the Americans were developing this, which was the F fourteen Tomcat. Right, heavier aeroplane. Stig still Big massive um, tail ones. Yeah, still got the, the the flaps along the whole trail edge of the wing. Okay, quite a good climb rate on the on the Tomcat. Okay, not quite as much anhedral. Most it does have a little bit of anhedral, but not quite as much as the Tony. Right, still the same big, huge tail ones. Still the differential spoilers. Okay, but because it's a bigger, heavier aeroplane and it hasn't quite got as much anhedral even though it's got a high amount of wing like the tornado if you look at that the roll rate is much less than the tornado okay no slouch still rolling pretty well but it's not rolling as fast as the tornado did why because it's basically a, meant to be a high altitude fleet defense interceptor and as long as it turns well it's got quite a large wing area bigger surface area so it'll turn I, don't, I think we'll probably have a turn the tornado, right? But when it comes to changing direction and rolling, it doesn't do it quite as quickly. Okay, and if you look at it, it's got slight wing fences on the top, on that big flat surface on top of the uh, the aircraft. Okay, just to, just to control the flow and make the flow go in the direction that you want it to be and create vortexes where you want them. Right, difference between the tornado as well. Instead of one big massive tail, it has two, and some little fins at the bottom of the aircraft at the back. Okay. Right, when we so kicking on for half an hour there. Uh area rule is another good example of area rule is the F one oh five Thunder Chief. Yeah you can see that's slimmed in the middle. Okay, so, so that's got area rule on it. This has got differential spoilers as well and a stabilator and quite a small fin for the speed of the aircraft. Okay, the, 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 the F-105 did, did suffer a little bit with having a slightly small fin that would, would, could be unstable in certain flight characteristics. So they'll put bigger fins on it later on. Uh, the Phantom, uh, so this, that's the F-4E with a slightly longer nose. F-4J and the F-4C, you can get classic Phantoms. Um, what you find is anhedral tail and a dihedral wing. Okay, they found that there's a slight anhedral on the wing at the, at, at the root and then they found it was slightly unstable in, in, in lateral stability so they put a bit of dihedral on um, to give the aircraft more stability. Okay, why? Because it's got a low mounted wing. Difference between the F4 Phantom and the F14. Yeah, as you can see, they both basically did a very similar job. The Phantom was earlier than the F14. 
Right, put the Phantom, high mounted wing on the F-14, so it needs some anhedral. Okay, and low mounted wing on the F-4 Phantom, so it needs a little bit of dihedral to compensate for that. Okay. It's one of the reasons you see airliners have low mounted wings, and that's why they have dihedral to compensate for the fact that the wings are low down. If you didn't give them a bit of dihedral, they might be too unstable. Uh, what else we got to look at? Okay, right, so when we're looking at anhedral, we, we've looked at the Harrier, the other kind of king of anhedral, if you want to call it that, would be the F-104. And the F-104 has a bit of area ruling on it. You see where the wings just slim in, just behind where the intakes are. It gets slimmer and then it gets slightly fatter again at the back where the engine is. Only slightly, right. One big engine at the back. Okay, we'll clean up a bit. Just got a stabilator, doesn't have a tail of one. It's relatively big ailerons for the size of the wings. And when we roll, again, you can see it rolls very, very sprightly. Okay, and, and we're doing Mach 0.75 already, so it accelerates well. It does need that little fin on the bottom row just to give it that extra stability. Okay, remember, all of that in front of the stars and bars there. If that aircraft was to go out of line, all that bit that's got US Air Force written on it, the oncoming airflow would see that and push on it and push it out of line, and make the any sort of uh, disturbance in like a yaw disturbance or a, a directional disturbance even worse. So that's why you need larger fins on faster aeroplanes because there's more force to push them out of the way if the if they encounter a, a, a disturbance in the directional plane. Right, okay, so what else can I show you? Just examples of aircraft that you can put in your assignments if you're doing a BTEC and you're doing Unit 48. Uh, we'll fly a MiG, an, a, a MiG-23. Um, unfortunately, I can't I can't fly the uh, MiG-29 because I have not unlocked that yet. But we can test fly the F-16 and I'll quit with that before we go. So the MiG-23, again, um, variable geometry swing wings. You need to call them variable geometry or swing wings. No. And you'll see when this takes off, go to side view straight away. Right, if you look at the back lower part of the fuselage, there is a fin which extends out. Okay, because the problem with the with all swept back wing aircraft, mainly variable geometry. When you sweep the wings forward, you actually lose some of that um, directional stability given by, you remember what I said, the, the, the oncoming wing will create more drag, so swept back wings give you more directional stability, right, when you sweep those wings forward you lose a bit of that and you need quite a big fin. So you'll see the F-111, the Tornado, um, you saw the two fins on the F-14 uh, and the the... And, and the large ventral fin, if it's on the bottom, it's called a, a ventral fin. So the MIG needs a large ventral fin. Okay. Um, those things on the top aren't wing fences. They are chaff and flare dispensers. Uh, but they do, I think, they, they add the direction stability of the aircraft. So just fade off and put over there. That was a, I think that was an add-on. As you see, there's not a lot of space. It's a huge engine on the MIG-23. There's not a lot of space to stick any flare dispensers in the fuselage. You just mounted them on the top leg. Okay, right. So if you look at the 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 MiG 23, you'll see not much, not many aircraft swing the wings back as far as that. And then those big sawtooth leading edges there, they'll create a vortex at the right point so that your tail of one, yeah, or, or the, the vortex, you don't lose uh, um, control effectiveness with separated flow. On the other end of that, you see it's got tail on to make it roll quite a big tail on, and it only has tiny little spoilers on the MiG 23. It still goes to differential spoilers. And 
just to wrap up then what we'll go you know the kind of natural sex successor to the um to the p51 and the f104 really is the f16 so what we've got here we've got tailor ones yeah we've got we don't have we've got a mid mountain wing yeah so the f35 the f22 right modern aircraft the f18 to some extent you see the fuselage is above and below the wing you've got a mid mount wing you do have a slight bit of of uh, anhedral on the f16 okay very slight just see if the back there it should be the right you can't really tell when you see a real one it, it obviously the tail is anhedral it's a slight bit of anhedral on that wing so perfectly straight so uh slight bit of anhedral this has got um flapper ones okay and large tailor ones for roll control so it uses you can see it's very very quick to roll the whole back surface if it's just zoom in there the whole back surface of that wing can operate as an aileron or a dedicated set of flaps so if i just drop the gears down put the flaps down see that they'll come down yeah so a dedicated set of flaps and the slats will extend at the leading edge of the wing there you can just see the just see the slats to make the wing more curved Okay, just zooming out there for low speed handling and then when we put the gear up uh, and then also see that the one goes up one goes down to act as large ailerons and so, that, so that's a, an aileron that can also act as a flap it's a flap and then the tailerons one up and one down give it that excellent work performance again quite a fast aircraft Right, so you might think that's got quite a small fin compared to other aircraft, but it's got the two ventral fins on the bottom. So the Jaguar and the F-16, two ventral fins on the bottom of them, and the Lightning has that as well. You need those extra fit, that extra fin area, if you're going to go supersonic. As we just did there, I'll pretend I planned that. Okay, right. Um, anything else to talk about? Something else I Seconds. Anyway, I'll cast 37 minutes. Okay, that's that's enough to go for now. Um, any questions and stuff like that, I'll put this on YouTube. You can ping it in the comments, uh, and I'll I'll hopefully put some some other. Um, I generally get quite busy in the summer, um, but I'll put some other videos up if people ask us questions about aerodynamics, and control, and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. The F-16 has these leading edge wing extensions. That changing angle there, when you put the cursor there, the changing angle of the wing, create a vortex at just the right point in high angles of attack to maintain vortex flow over the, the flapper ones so you don't lose control effectiveness at high angles of attack. Right, thanks for watching. Um, can't think of anything else to go for now. Done area rule. We've done uh, anhedral. Uh, anhe like, like, like I say, um, and then wing fences. We've covered them to death, haven't we? So, uh, sawtooth leading edges. You saw just going back the Harrier. Yeah, if we a quick little Harrier wing. You've got these little tiny vortalons, like mini wing fences. You've got two sawtooth leading edges in the, in the front there to cut down the spam wise floor and then to maintain the control effectiveness right you've got the sawtooth and you've also got all these little vortex generators along here so this thing and a thing called the the Gloucester Javelin has and the the Buccaneer has these sawtooth leading edges you do see them on the tornado on the tail I think don't you, know, don't you see that yeah uh, the tail has them just in front of the rudder so you couple the vortex generators down there so it's not just the other ones that have them um yeah and then the more modern harrier the gr7 and the gr9 a lot more advanced wing a lot more fly-by-wire aircraft so it, it can counter the stability as the f-16 can uh, it doesn't need wing fences and stuff because it'll just move its control surfaces wherever the computer tells it to go but it still has tiny little vortlons on there and the pylons act as wing fences as well okay so the U Fighter Typhoon can only fly with its pylons fitted on the wings. Um, everything's doing a job. There's your leading edge wing extensions that were fitted on the 
uh, on the Harrier to give it a bit more. Um, yeah, let's look, not leave the French out because uh, one of my students will be upset if I do. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you have a look at the Mirage, the modern one. Yeah, again, fly by wire, no wing fences, no anything on the leading edge, right? But it's got a bit of area rule there. Can you see the area rule? That's still there. That's still useful. Okay. If we look at an older Mirage, the Mirage 3, you'll find that that'll have a notch. Yeah, so in front of the control surfaces and to stop a bit of span rise flow, it's got a notch and it's also got a thing called washout. So most Delta Wing aircraft, you'll find that the angle of incidence will be greater at the wing, wing root than it is at the wing tip. And that way, where you get less angle at the wing tip and it, it droops down a little bit, that's called washout. You see that on on the Vulcan, you see it on Concorde, and you see it on Mirages, and it's on the Rafale and the Typhoon as well. Okay, right. Okay, thanks very much for watching, um, and I'll see you again sometime.